Your hosts, Fester Jenkins and Mama Dukes on Born to Ride Radio. Yes, welcome to another Thursday edition of Born to Ride Radio on the Boss Hog Radio Network. I'm Fester Jenkins in the studio with me. I'm Mama Dukes. Supposed to be Mama Dukes. I'm but, Mama uh, Dukes. I oh, you're Ma- the, I heard the intro. What, what, what happened to your voice, Mama Dukes? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, COVID. COVID. <laughs> okay. It took over my body. Mm. Is, this a, is this on? Yeah, it's okay. on. All right. Well, hello, Mr. Fester. Oh, howdy, howdy. Gary Michaels in the studio there. Thank you, man, for having me here. This is a blast. It's been a long time since I've been in the studio. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean, do a lot of uh, you know radio stuff over the phone like we do occasionally right. for Born to Ride. But uh, it just brings back a lot of memories, man. Mm-hmm. Lots of memories. And I, well, I have to you, say this. Your earlier career was all about radio. I 30, mean, so. 35 years. Yep. Yeah, 35 years in radio. And then, of course, I did a lot of commercials and stuff, which I still do, you know, on occasion. Um, but I have an announcement to make, man. Ooh. I hope this is this is a personal thing. Okay. Um, I've been in the radio business going on 35 years, I think, I guess. And my dad has never actually heard me live on the air. Now, he's heard recordings and Right. You know, the podcast that we post or whatever, but never live. But I think he's actually listening in Franklin, Indiana right now. Cool. Yeah, I think awesome. that's pretty cool, man. Mm, okay. He's probably back rolling his eyes like he usually does. Yeah. Now, I know DB, uh, <laughs> typically when you call in and then the show's over in the evening, you know, DB what? has... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, better late than never, Mama Dukes, but I welcome know. to the show there. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, yeah. she's a woman, dude. She's allowed to be like mm-hmm. Okay. Can you hear that whimpering in the background? That's my puppy. That's, that's my puppy. That's, puppy. that's Gracie. <laughs> and she likes to eat guys with hats. Ah. <laughs> Can you see her? You see the puppy? <laughs> she's got to come say hi, Mama Dukes. Hi. So, uh, Ron texted me, you know, late last night. I think I had a been drinking or something they said uh you you gonna be live in the studio uh, uh you know tomorrow and i'm like sure that's just about all i could give him <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then he texts me on the way down he's like uh you you gonna co-host the show today and i'm like yeah why not mm-hmm. i'm not far i didn't think we were gonna make it man i'm already in a in a weird mood well, let me explain why we go to the hotel not a bad little hotel we wanted the first floor got bad knees bad back you know i'm getting old no, third floor. Third floor. Yeah. And the elevators are broken. Ah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And I needed to get my trailer over to Give Town. Right. And drop it off. Well, Larry had called. He said, when are you getting in town? I said, dude, I'm already here. I just, I'm not going to be able to make it to the trailer. I'm going to have to pull my trailer. And, dude, you got gates out here with locks on them. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how to get in here. <laughs> and then I get down here and have to turn around and do some weird stuff. Yeah, they lock the compound up pretty tightly at night. Why? They afraid you're going to steal you? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> they wish somebody would steal me. <laughs> so I was like, and then I, the, all the construction you've got out here. Right. Yeah, the road construction. Well, yep. I had to back up in the wrong lane, and I couldn't get over to the right lane. I said, watch it. And she goes, oh, Lord, we're going to die. <laughs> I said, well, hopefully they'll broadcast it. <laughs> We'll make the news. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Okay, so you haven't been down to Gibtown yet. I haven't. I was planning on getting here kind of early, and I forgot, just like you guys forgot when you were headed towards Panama City, that you you lose an hour. Right. Or you gain an hour. We gained. You gained. I lost one, and I forgot. So we took our time, and of course, you know how women are to get ready and fix their hair, always wanting to stop every 10 Custard. miles and, mm-hmm. you know april does that a lot so <laughs> so that that's kind of it took us a little bit longer to to get here and then we had to rush i you know i barely saw the room seriously i mean open the door put the suitcases in had to run downstairs and larry was hooking up the trailer and i jumped in the truck and i'm like look at the traffic on 75 this is going to be fun yeah and i was planning on riding a bike over here and i'm, I'm kind of glad i didn't well i couldn't anyway because the battery's dead <laughs> so this has been a day man <laughs> well you made it here we're glad you're here in the studio and uh welcome to the show mama dukes glad Hi guys. you guys like, am i a special guest or something yeah, you <laughs> well, no, because, 
Because uh, last week when we were on the program, Ron said that we were going to get Mama Dukes in here and I was going to have to hypnotize you again. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no. come on. What do you mean, no? It's no. pretty okay. easy to do. <laughs> I mean, you and April are in the same class. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could start talking to you guys right now. Uh-uh. And, <laughs> and within, within Not about... Not look into his eyes. <laughs> within about 30 seconds, both of y'all will be asleep. And under my command. You know, the thing that bothers me, because I know he's tried it, and it doesn't seem to work with me. And I remember Gary telling me one of the times that, you know, there's only two types of people that it typically doesn't work on. Right. You, Gary, you want to share those? And, I, and neither one of them are good options, in my opinion. But uh, Well, let me just put it this way. I'll do this in, I'll do this in a nice way. <laughs> uh, people that are really good hypnotic subjects have a very high IQ. So if you're a moron and you voted for Biden and uh, you 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 know have these weird thoughts in your head, then you're probably like our friend Dee Dee back in Georgia. She's extra stupid. I couldn't hypnotize her if I had 17 hypnotists there trying to go look into my eyes. She couldn't find your eyes. Mm-hmm. Is, okay. it a, is, it, is it like a focus thing? Maybe like maybe it is they focus. just can't like. I make jokes about it all right. the time. You know, if you're a complete moron or if you're stupid, if you don't have a very high IQ. It's kind of true, but I make jokes about it. Uh, but people that go into hypnosis very quickly, which is entertainer, is what I look for. Somebody going very fast. Okay. They have a, an ability to concentrate and focus and visualize in their brain. Okay. It's like dreaming. It, it seriously <laughs> he's describing you so how, how how can you not be hypnotized well it's not that he can't be hypnotized he won't it, let himself there's part there's some people that they that they fight it and, and they can't get under hypnosis if they force it they can't get under hypnosis if they just allow it to happen for example when you were hypnotized oh, okay. you had a you had a, an incredible relaxation all over your body I mean, just like profound relaxation. That's probably because I can lay down anywhere and go to sleep. Well, that's, <laughs> but you, your ability to focus and to, uh, uh, on that relaxation just causes your body to, just, and I've heard you say this before when I wasn't on here, I, you know, I do listen to you guys every once in a while. <laughs> okay. uh, I heard you say that, uh, you heard everything that was going on. Mm-hmm. You knew what was going on, but you couldn't control certain suggestions that i had given yes. you right well you're not really asleep right it looks like you're asleep but you're not really asleep and when you're in that hypnotic state and your eyes are closed if you can't hear me you're not going to be able to do anything so you're obviously going to hear everything okay but you're more aware of your surroundings believe it or not when right. you're in that hypnotic state you're more aware of everything that's going on around you. really hmm. well here's an example when you go to bed do you fall out of bed no. Why not? Well, I'm going to tell you why. Your brain is constantly working. From the time you're born until you fall in love, your brain constantly works. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Boy, your dad would be so happy to hear that right now. <laughs> so your brain tells you there's a boundary right there. Okay. So your brain is working. Even when you're asleep, your brain's where you're not shut down. You're just rebooting, so to speak. And when you are sound asleep and you hear a noise, what happens? You wake up. Why? Because your brain says, hello, there's a noise. And you wake up. Okay. It's sort of like being hypnotized. There's really no definition of hypnosis. It's been around for hundreds of thousands of years. Uh, There's really no definition for it, but that's the best way to describe it. And, And since you were hypnotized twice, You were hypnotized twice. Yes. Meaning, now here's the cool thing. Uh, Once you've been hypnotized in in a deep hypnosis like you were. Doesn't work anymore? Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no, no, no. No, it's actually very simple and very easy to go back under hypnosis. Very quickly. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to. So you you asked the question, you know, about being smart or dumb. Right. Okay. There's. We talked about this the very first radio program. Correct. I remember this. If you're familiar with the bell curve, okay. Right. On uh, one end of the bell curve, there's 2.14% of the population can never be hypnotized. Schizophrenia, mental retardations, serial killers. They they voted for Joe Biden, whatever. (laughs) They cannot ever be hypnotized, okay. Uh, And as you start to go up the bell curve, you got about 78% that are average, 
You know, you got a few below average, but then you got to average. But as you go down on the other side of the bell curve, you've got 2.14% of the population that are called synambulistic. Synambulism is, uh, the def- the definition of synambulism is sleepwalking. Okay. So they go under very quickly because they have a, a ability to concentrate. They have ability to focus and they can visualize, uh, you remember we did the finger thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, a lot of times I'll ask people to leave their eyes open and they can literally watch their fingers go together. But if they close their eyes, they feel okay. But the, their brain is telling them that there's magnets in their fingers. That's what the picture is in their brain. It's called catalepsy. When you can stick somebody's arm out like this and make them believe that their arm is a, a steel bar and it's welded, welded to your shoulder. You cannot bend it. You cannot pull it down no matter what you do. Catalepsy, that's what that's called. And April will tell you, you can go up to that person and literally hang on their arm. It doesn't matter if it's a male or a female. It doesn't matter. The profound strength, their brain is telling them this is a steel bar and it won't move. It's it, The brain is amazing. My brain has two brain cells left and one's waving bye-bye to the other one, so I don't know if I could be hypnotized or not. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, hey, you are in town this weekend and for an event. I am we kind of- absolutely proud to announce that I am hosting Gib Town, the, the bike fest the kickoff, actually. Isn't this like a kickoff for all the bike rallies? Exactly. This is the first one of the year. This is the one that, uh, you know, and uh, I guess Florida is kind of special with that from the standpoint of, you well, know, yeah, you got good town. weather. You know, I mean, sure. Just, and uh, but I remember a few years back riding there. And, of course, I had my leathers, my jackets, and I still froze my tail off. You know, it was uh, probably in the 30s and 40s that uh evening and uh but normally you know january here in florida you've got great temperatures Dude, you know? i'm a and kentucky you got- boy and it's just snowed like crazy up there and it was 12 degrees mm. i think i think someone and i do business there's a guy i do business with in canada he was telling me that uh, a couple of days ago he said how's the weather where you are i'm in panama city i said 75 <laughs> i'm looking at the beach pelicans and oh look some skin walking through here. <laughs> and he goes what wait what i said yeah i'm on the beach he says it's minus 30 degrees where i am mm, mm. i said i can feel how cold it is goodbye click yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, Mama Duke's experienced uh, Gib Town for the first time last year. Looking forward to it this year. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fired up, man. I've, ne- I've never been to Gib Town. And uh, when uh, actually Ron is who put this together, he told me to call Larry. And uh, I gave Larry a call. And I had him laughing within the first 30 seconds. And he's already said, dude, I think I want you back here next year. I'm like, <laughs> okay. I, you haven't even seen me work yet. <laughs> But here's the cool thing about Larry. I like Larry, man. He, I just met him briefly. He called. He said, let me come get your trailer for you. I got a place for it to park it over here at Gip Town. Dude, that would be awesome. That way I don't have to rush when we leave here. Right. So he came and got the trailer. And uh, he said, I want you to come by, you know, Gip Town. I don't know what it's called. There's a, a, a showman's club. The showman's or, club arena and everything. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. That's where they're having. That's where they have yeah. the event. Yes. So is this a mute button right here? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> I just needed to do that. I just need to call real quick. Okay. okay smoker's call. Uh, so anyway, he said, uh, when you get finished your radio program, y'all go get something to eat, and you you come by Gip Town and come to the bar. I said, is there alcohol in there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he said, yes. He said, my favorite place. <laughs> we'll be right there. <laughs> you, you'll have to tell me twice. Because <laughs> I, I can foresee. I'm also a mentalist. Do you know that? And I can, in a psychic, I can foresee the future. I can foresee about a half a dozen dirty martinis right in front of me. <laughs> can you all see that? Can you see that, April? I can see that. Yes. I'll let her drive. <laughs> okay. Man, I'm excited, man. I, uh, I got to MC uh, Angel City, which was fun. Uh <sighs> Man, we go to a lot. Of- I think that was your first time at Angel City, too, that right? That was my first time at Angel City. Uh, that was a lot of fun. That's a cool place. It, oh, it is. Fantastic place. And uh, those Georgia boys, they uh, party a little differently than down here in Florida, but uh, still a fun party. Jo- uh, uh, April felt right at home. <laughs> she did. <laughs> well, that's where she's from. She's oh. from Georgia. And here's something that we do. 
and uh, y'all forgive me. I got a little. I've had this little scratch in my throat for a couple of days. You want a drink? Yes, a dirty martini, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyhow, um, she felt right at home because she's from Georgia. And what April likes to do is she will walk around and talk to every single person at the rally. Her and I both do, don't we, baby? That's the best way to do it, isn't it? So when we get out there, everybody knows who we are. Thank you, Mama Dukes. You're awesome. Did you hear anything I just said? Sometimes. I was trying to keep the from dead air because he was on the telephone. We have. I love callers, by the way. <laughs> Those are so fun. <laughs> Oh, absolutely, yes. Okay, sorry, I was uh, screening the caller there, so we're going to have Bobby Friss here in just a moment. Bobby's on his way. <laughs> yep, Bobby's here on the phone. Oh, he's on the phone. Yeah, he's on the phone there. So, oh, uh, I definitely want to talk to him because uh, I put him in my promo. Uh -huh. Do you see my promo? Yes, I did. Isn't that a pretty cool promo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We actually <laughs> used pieces of that. Larry uh, wanted to do a little bit of advertising, so we've ru we're running a few uh, commercials for him and... That'll be 50 bucks. <laughs> Take it up, Larry. Took me a long time to put that thing together, well, man. <laughs> you know, collect that from Larry. <laughs> Larry, that'll be 150 bucks. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, anyhow, what were you saying? Oh, about Georgia. Yeah, she, Georgia. She, I was yeah. telling what I was saying when nobody was in the studio, and, and you know, I, I haven't been in radio that long enough to have a camera in front of me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make sure I smell okay. No, April and I, what we like to do, and, and I almost want to present this as a double act, because when April's with me, she's on stage with me, whether I'm emceeing something or whether, obviously, when we're doing a show. But in at Angel City, April and I walked around and spoke to every single person there. She loves doing that. And and she, obviously, she sells some T-shirts every once in a while, too, works for me right. i think he likes doing it too a little bit too huh well but that's who we are because you know there's a lot of people that uh, across the country and i've heard about some of the mcs like in sturgis and some places out west that they'll come out up on stage they'll do their thing here's the band throw out some stuff and then they're gone poof you don't see them well you can't do that man if you want to get to know the people you get out there and talk to them which is fun for me because when I get out there, I'll start doing magic tricks for them, and then I'll start hypnotizing people. <laughs> and the next thing you know, I have a whole crowd of people around me, and I go, "Where's my dad? They go fix it and whip my ass. Where's my dad? Where's my dad?" Where's my dad? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> but no, that's what we do. We we had a blast in in Georgia, uh, and I also want to do a lot more emceeing. Emceeing is an easy job. You know, money's good; it's not bad, but not as much as we make doing a show. But I love being on the stage. <laughs> anybody in my family will tell you since i was this tall i was always in the middle of everything i always had to be the center of attention and i'll never forget when i got into radio business i used to talk like this oh now my dad's going oh yeah that's my boy there yeah i recognize him <laughs> now I recognize him that's not no that's not my son <laughs> so anyway uh i went into my mother and i went hey mom guess what i got a job in radio <laughs> she looked at me she goes Son, why don't you go get a real job? Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? You're killing my dreams here. <laughs> 35 years later, I'm still in the business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, dude, I can talk all day long about the adventures that April and I have been <laughs> on, but I'm also looking forward to this adventure. And I do want to thank uh, Born to Ride, obviously. Cyclefish.com. That is the best place to go to find out about any biker-friendly venue, rally, whatever it is anywhere in the world lucky at cyclefish.com has that um also my manager stan i have a manager now mm, okay. oh, i'm very well <laughs> yes i'm moving up <laughs> i'm kind of a big deal <laughs> <laughs> now where's my money <laughs> <laughs> so i'm very excited about give town man i'm really really looking forward to it and the conversations that larry and i have had on the phone Oh, strap yourself in and hold on to the bar. It's it is a it's a different kind of event than a lot of the others, but uh, I think you're still going to have a great time. You're going to enjoy. It. We're going to have a dancing monkey. <laughs> yep, I'm all actually going to feed the dog to the dancing monkey. Mm -hmm. She's back there whining. Mm -hmm. Come here, come here, baby. Come on. 
Okay. He's all right. Well, speaking of uh, what's going on this weekend and everything and your promo, why don't we go ahead and bring uh, Bobby on the line? Absolutely. What do you think? Absolutely. Bobby, are you there? I am here, sir. Okay. Welcome to Born to Ride Radio on the Boss Hog Radio Network. You've got uh, Mama Dukes in the studio. I'm Fester Jenkins. And, of course, we've got Gary Michaels, who will be emceeing the event this weekend there. Fantastic. Good to talk to you guys. Bobby, I'm looking forward to seeing you, man. I've heard a lot about you. I've seen some of some videos, and obviously, I tried to put as many in, in the promo as I could, but uh, I got you in there. Uh, but I appreciate I, that. I'm really looking forward to hearing you play, brother. Yeah, it's, uh, I go back uh, to the early days with the Gibb Town Bike Fest when Ron Lane was uh, kind of getting it off the ground, and so I feel uh, a real kindred spirit to the, to the festival of what it's become. It's become a quite a quite a story around the southeast with bike fest so tell me what kind of listen bobby forgive me okay but i need to know <laughs> okay. what genre of music are you playing are you playing some classic rock playing some uh, original stuff yeah it's, it's classic rock yeah awesome. we're we're uh meat and potatoes rock and roll for all the good stuff that everyone loves to hear so well, i might even get up our, and sing one or two with you uh, you never know. It'll be fun, man. Oh, well, I, I just, you know, you say that to a guy in a band and go, yep, you never know. You probably That's suck, right. dude. Yeah, <laughs> keep that guy away from the yeah, stage. Right. <laughs> well, I've had a little bit of experience with it. Just, just a little bit. A t- tad bit. Yeah. yeah. A little bit there. But I am looking forward to it, Bobby. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's going to be a, a fun weekend, and looks like the weather's going to hold out for us. So it's... Uh, Looking forward to being on the outside stage, the Fran Hosh uh, outside stage on Friday, tomorrow, 7 to 9, and then we're going to play inside um, Saturday night late. So we get a couple nights of, of seeing everybody there. Okay, so if they miss you uh, Friday, they can have an opportunity to catch your act on uh, Saturday evening. That's awesome there. Yeah, there's a couple of bands yep. that are going to be Friday and Saturday, and I think there's isn't there going to be some Saturday and Sunday as well? I think, but then you know they have. Uh, oh, dude, I could I, off the top of my head, some of the bands that are going to be there. I'm really, really looking forward to. You know, Wicked Serenity being one. I did. I did a gig in uh, Fort Myers at a place called Buddha Live, and I had seen them down there. I didn't see them, but I saw that they had played there, and it's a pretty cool venue. So I'm thinking to myself. Okay, well, if they play down here at the Buddha and they're playing Give Town, okay, they must be something. Something, something to watch. So I'm really looking forward to seeing all the bands, including you, Bobby. I've really look. I've, like I said, I've heard a lot about you, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's uh, we've we've had a long run and uh, been uh, working with uh, Born to Ride magazine for a lot of years. So it's uh, it's a good combo. It all works out, doesn't it? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, Bobby, tell me again, when are you going to be playing? I don't have the schedule in front of me. We are going to play the outside stage, which is the uh, Law Fran stage, uh, 7 to 9, tomorrow night, Friday. And then Saturday, we'll be on the inside stage late. That'll be like 9 to 11. So, a couple couple different uh, chances to come out and see a lot of our uh, Tampa Bay, Florida friends, you know, it's, it's, it seems like uh, places and venues and events are few and far between these days. So when there's something great like Gibtown Bike Fest, you know, highly recommend everybody getting out and, and getting out to, to be there, be part of it, because it's, it's always been a blast. There's just, you know, tons of stuff to do. Everyone that works there and is part of it are good people, and they have, it's just, it's all about fun there. There's no no strong arming. There's no, uh, you know, looking around for, you know, the the next thing to do. It's there's always something to see there. So it's it's a great event. He had me at fun. Well, yeah, yeah, he had me at that. Yeah, yeah. fun is is my and I'm if you're going to be on the Fran Hosh uh, main stage there, Bobby, I'm probably going to be the one introducing you. So I'm really looking forward well, that, to that too, man. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah, that, we'll have a blast. Big, yeah. We'll knock it out of the park. Baby. Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, whenever I've been there, the you've got a perfect time slot for Saturday. That nine to eleven inside. Uh, that's a great place. Uh, I enjoy. I you know, 
Is that a bar? Yeah, there's bars there. Of course, there. You know, okay. Yeah, okay. Of course it is. <laughs> yes, there's alcohol yeah. there. You ever yes. notice how a really good story never starts with, well, me and my buddy were having a salad, <laughs> and this happened. It always, hey, me and my buddy was at a bar. <laughs> well, you never know what's going to happen. That's for sure. <laughs> but, uh, no, uh, the nighttime, uh, the uh, the event doesn't die down. It's one that kind of goes till open to close in the gates there at Gibtown. Really? Really like it and enjoying it. Yep. Well, I'm fired up about it, and I cannot wait. Bobby, I can't wait to meet you as well as the rest of those guys out there, man. It's going to be fun. Yes, sir. I appreciate you guys having me on and uh, look forward to seeing everybody out there tomorrow and Saturday. Absolutely. But, Bobby, before you go, uh, Ron was telling me that you're going to be doing something in uh, February here in the uh, Central Florida area. You want to talk about that a little uh, bit? Yeah. Sure. I'm, uh, I'm coming back to play the uh, Thunder by the Bay Bike Fest down in Sarasota. We're going to do the Sunday, February 20th. So uh, really looking forward to that. That's a, that's a, that's just a gas, man. It's a, uh, I've, I've done that on and off, I think, for most of the 25 years that uh, they've been doing it. So uh, it's they've made hundreds of thousands of dollars for uh, the Florida Center for Children, and I'm all about that. That's Absolutely. Uh, you, know, you you really are big whenever it comes to Central Florida and helping the kids and children, no doubt about that, Bobby. Certainly appreciate that. Well, well, I appreciate you guys saying that, but I always look at it like I've been given so much. I mean, my career has been just a friggin' blast. I've just had just I couldn't have mapped out anything that was more fun to bring, you know, happiness to people and be able to express myself and entertain. But, uh, you know, if I didn't give back for everything that I've had with my career and my, I've got a family and I've got kids that are healthy and, you know, I just feel like I'm fortunate and blessed and I can't just say, well, I got mine, so I'm not right. going to worry about anybody. So like I, 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 all of that being said, though, Bobby, I'm sure you, after what I just heard, you can relate to this, that there's most people do not understand what it's like when we're up on stage and we're entertaining people. It's not that we're having fun, but we are, but it's what we're giving to the crowd or to the audience at that given time. I've, I've said this a million times. You and I are on the same page here, dude. I said this a million times. Yeah. I do not know how much value I have in this world, but I know that if I've made one person laugh along the way and give them joy and, and made them forget about something that was going on in their lives, just that one person, I'm the richest man in the world. Yeah, it's uh, especially these days where it's, you know people are going through some tough times, and if we can make them forget a little bit about it, and that's what I always say about my shows. My shows are entertainment, fun, and music. I don't want any politics. I don't want anybody's uh, thoughts. or <laughs> That doesn't come into play with me. I'm not Bruce Springsteen or Neil Young. I'm a guy that goes out there, and I accept everybody, all colors all races right all creeds that. all religions all politics if you like music and you want to get together and have a good time we're all going to do this together we're not going to talk about uh, who we support or uh, you know what we believe in or any of that stuff we're just going to have some fun i'm all about that as long as there's some tito's close <laughs> <laughs> I can't drink fireball yes, anymore. I can't drink fireball anymore, so I have to I, yeah, me I can't. Mm. I used to drink a lot of it and I can't do that anymore. Heartburn. No. It's gonna kill me. <laughs> I I wanna live. I wanna live. I wanna live. <laughs> I wanna live. Thank you, Bobby. I wanna live. <laughs> well, Bobby, it sounds like uh you listeners out there you're going to have two opportunities friday out there at the main stage and saturday evening inside you can catch bobby frisch and uh looking forward to seeing you out there absolutely i just want to hang out with the guy yeah works, yeah. works for me it's going to be a blast can't wait to see you guys out there and and then in February at Thunder by the Bay, so it's uh, well. Who do I have to uh, kiss to get part of Thunder by the Bay? I want to MC that gig too. <laughs> there you We're go. You got to reach out. 
Who? Reach out to reach out to Lucy down there. She's the she's the, she's the, Lucy L- Lucy's the been the one that does that and I'm works that he, here. I'm so. just glad he said it was a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. I knew that was coming. <laughs> well, Bobby, we certainly appreciate you taking a few minutes and uh, spending the evening with us and our listeners here on uh, Born to Ride Radio, and uh, look forward to seeing it. you this weekend. Absolutely, man. I appreciate you guys having me on and look forward to seeing you guys this weekend. Rock on. Okay. Thanks. Have a great one. And if we hear a shotgun blast, don't worry. I'm just shooting the dog. Okay. Well, right now, let's take a short minute break and uh, we'll be right back, folks. The Brand House Law Group welcomes you to the Gip Town Bike Fest, January 14th through the 16th in Gibsonton, Florida. This is sure to wow you with an impressive lineup of bands. Florida's most entertaining bike event. Gibtown Bike Fest, January 14th through the 16th. Accurate Talent Management proudly presents your host at Gibtown, Gary Michaels, the world's only biker comedy hypnotist. With special thanks to Born to Ride Magazine and CycleFish.com. 30 bands in all. There'll be thrill shows such as the High Flying Motorcycle Daredevil. Gilligan, the Dancing Monkey, a sword swallower, and things we can't even mention, they're so cool. Thanks to Accurate Talent Management, Born to Ride, CycleFish.com, Motorcycle Mayhem Radio, and Just for Fun Radio. Happy New Year, and rock on! You can join the Motorcycle Enthusiast Conversation at 863-225-2000. Now, here's more of your hosts, Fester Jenkins and Mama Dukes on Born to Ride Radio. What is this? That's a long story. That was a Christmas gift, the okay? The <laughs> <Wait. laughs> in this studio. <laughs> Only Do y'all see in- this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, you know, I haven't been on radio with television <laughs> okay, at the same yeah. time. I've been on TV and not radio, and then radio and not TV, and but never both. So yeah, glow poop. <laughs> <laughs> Might want to get that checked out. <laughs> <laughs> every morning, every Saturday morning, mine glows because <laughs> there's no telling what I had Friday night. <laughs> but why is it on a popsicle stick? For a straw? Is it a straw? Honestly, I've been afraid to open up the package to look at the damn thing. <laughs> Hey, but get, I'll open it up. That was a Christmas gift. Oh, <laughs> okay. sure it was. Yes, it's a gag gift, just like going to the sex store. You it was. Buy it was taped right. on top of the box oh, of there. Okay, yes. so that was instead of a ribbon and bow. That's what was on the top of it. Mama Dukes, here's a form of hypnosis. Okay, once you have to explain yourself where that came from. Okay, <laughs> there's a lot more to it than what he's telling us. So you just have to be able to read. I'm going to get the, the rest of the story later. No, I want it now. <laughs> <laughs> there is no rest of the story. In other words, if this was on top, what was in the box? Yeah, what was in the well, box? Actually, the, the stuff that was in the bottom of the box was uh, actually some good stuff. I mean, in other words, uh, it, was a care, it was a care package from uh, Pennsylvania. There was some uh, molasses there. There was some different stuff. I mean, it... Uh, All the stuff that causes that. Jenny's uh, parents had uh, sent down packages for everyone in the studio there. And so that was... Glow poop. Glow that's yeah, what, that's poop. what they thought of you guys. Uh, on top. So. <laughs> yeah. Glow poop. Okay. You got to figure the sunny side up morning show. You know, I mean, yeah. just, you, know. you got to look at the bright side of things. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you an example. Well, Yesterday I got called pretty. <laughs> it was followed by you were pretty annoying, but uh, okay. the bright side of things. Okay. <laughs> Always look at that cup that's half all full. The time. <laughs> all the time. Thunder by the Bay, I'd like to do that, man. I'd like to do a show down there. That'd be fun. It, I, it's a, we had a lot of fun there really? last year. Yeah, that's a, it's a very large event too. So at Give Town, if, if you read, if you listen to the commercial, the, the promo that I put together, there's going to be a sword swallower. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat that. You're gonna beat that. I am. I'm gonna swallow an arrow, and they're gonna shoot it from twenty yards away. And I'm gonna swallow it. Boom. Last week I was gonna swallow a fishing pole. But it, them little eyes on a fishing pole probably hurt a little bit. So now I'm going to have them shoot an arrow, and it's going to go right in my mouth. And I'm going to swallow it, just like they did on America's Got Talent. Do you remember that? Dude got shot in the neck with a crossbow. How many times have you practiced this? Uh, never. <laughs> I'm going to let April be the one to shoot. Oh, she can enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's probably going for the throat, but... <laughs> 
Yeah, but you know how many people are listening right now? I'm like, boy, I'd like to see that. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go see that show. April's outside talking about, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> right? Let's go by shoot straight and do a little bit of practicing, right? <laughs> oh, she's going to hit the target. That's for sure. Boy, if she misses, I won't be able to see much, will I? Yeah. <laughs> no, you won't be able to. That reminds me of that cross-eyed girl I went out with once. <laughs> We didn't see eye to eye. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pretty sure she was seeing somebody on the side, too. Yeah, probably so. <laughs> April invented the echo. That's what she told me. I said, well, you listen to yourself. <laughs> You'll get, take a minute yeah. for it to sink in. Yeah. It. Took you a minute to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my, my. April, is, April, let me tell you something. April's the best. And uh, through 50-some years, believe me, I've been around the block and one thing i've learned to have a really good life and happy and fun is to find a good partner to enjoy it with yes and she's my best friend i mean i've got several guy friends you know my best friend ray back in kentucky we've been friends (laughs) he can tell you some stories that i can't even remember but april is everything man she's my showgirl she's my best friend you know the best way to get to know somebody Get stuck in a traffic jam for two hours. Mm-hmm. That's the best way to get to know somebody. So, Ray, uh, <laughs> what, what kind of uh, blackout drunk stories do you have about oh, Gary? Oh, my God. <laughs> if, if Ray McBride was in this studio right now or if he was listening and I didn't tell him I was going to be on the program, but it, and he's working. Thank God. <laughs> Dude, he can tell you guys some stories that, again, I, I, don't, I don't even know if I want to remember. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. He's like, I can't remember it. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, it goes both ways. I got <laughs> yeah. stories for him, too. I'll give you one right now. Okay, it, it was funny. It, on it was funny as it could be. He came home. I, w- I didn't go with him this time, but I had showed up at his house maybe an hour after this happened. He had decided to go fishing, and I knew he was going fishing. And then later that evening, we were going to go frog gigging. It's a Kentucky thing. You know, country boys is what we do. Right. right. We do that down here, too. Do they? Nice. You see, I love doing that. Well, when I get there, he's got big knot on his forehead, and his eyes are black. I'm like, what in the world happened to you? He said, I'm not telling you. <laughs> so his wife comes in. Becky, she goes, what? She's laughing. What happened to you? I'm not telling you. You'll tell everybody. No, we won't. <laughs> no. We would never. <laughs> and she just kept laughing and, and agging him on, you know, and, and finally he told the story. Well, he was at a creek, and he had this big two-ounce egg sinker on the end of the of his line. He got hung up, and he's sitting there flopping it. <laughs> and finally it breaks <laughs> loose, and that egg sinker <laughs> hits him right in the forehead. <laughs> Not 30 seconds later, his wife's on the phone to her best friend. Egg hey, <laughs> he'd kill me if i told that story if he knew i told that story but that's yeah that's what happened it was uh he's got some stories like that about me too mm-hmm. one thing that i enjoyed about growing up we didn't have these that's what i was just oh, going to say now that story would have went right on facebook right for all we the didn't world have these see. man there's no video evidence for the stupidity and the antics that were done. Well, back then. I, I can't say there's no video evidence. <laughs> okay. I just don't know where it is. Oh, okay. And it might be on VHS tape or beta. Oh, my God. I'm aging myself. Yeah. 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 Let's talk more about Give Town. <laughs> How about the Give Town? Okay, so... Uh, first time, first time being at Gibb Town. First time being MC at in it there. Uh, yes. So uh, I am the host, the host with the most mm-hmm. for Gibb Town Bike Fest. I'm really looking forward to meeting Fran Hosh and her husband Rhett, uh, and I pray for them. They, I know they had some things happen last week, and you know, to yep. pray for them every day, you know, because I know they're going through some hard time. But I'm really looking forward to meeting them, hanging out with Larry and some of those other guys. I really want to see the dancing monkey, man. I, I really want to see that. I don't know if it's the same monkey that I had in the promo. I, you know, I, I saw the promo and uh, Did they have it last year. I don't remember a dancing monkey I, last I, I year. Larry kept telling me about. I mean, the, there was a lot of drunk people there, <laughs> but <laughs> maybe there's a lot of dancing monkeys. <laughs> Be Planet of the Apes, disco style. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? Leather vest. <laughs> oh my God. Staying alive, staying alive. <laughs> 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 you know that reminds me. I saw my ex walking down the street the other day. Oh goodness! 
They got a whole new meaning to, yeah, I'd hit that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Faster, you feel that same way, don't you? <laughs> you did it twice. <laughs> and if you haven't noticed, oh, twice. What? Wait, you did it you twice. Did it. You didn't get it. Did you hear him say it again, Gary? <laughs> no, I've only been married once. <laughs> okay. No, <that's> not- <laughs> okay. <laughs> you you didn't get what I said. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. That's Actually, it was more than a couple times. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well. I got a couple kids out of the marriage yeah. there. <laughs> oh, that wasn't that hit that that you were thinking about. Oh, okay, you know, that, okay. You know that, that also reminds me. I was in Walmart somewhere, and this little girl comes up to me, and she goes, "Hi, Daddy." And I went, "I don't know who's your mom." <laughs> she goes, "Way over there." I said, "Nope, not mine." <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but a lot of times, you know, we'll be on a topic, and I'll just go somewhere else, random. It's part of the show. You have seen the show. You know yeah. it's part of the show. And then I'll get right back to what we were talking about in the first place. So just give me a minute. We'll get there. I feel like you're not going to be able to see this on camera, but I feel like April does a lot of this. Come here. Mm-hmm. Yo. <laughs> you, have no, you have absolutely just no Finger idea. to the lips with a shh. <laughs> well, we actually, we, I, I, I created a drinking game. Ooh, I did. Do tell. Okay. Every time April is behind me rolling her eyes or shaking her head like this, you have to take a drink. Mm. How, how, <laughs> how do you get through a day? How, how do you get through like probably an hour? Like, Just remember wait, this. Who has to drink? You or her? Everybody has. Everybody like, drinks. Okay. Everybody drinks. Now, when we're on stage, everybody in the audience has to drink. Okay. See, it's all part of the plan. I get them drunk. They love the show. <laughs> How was the show? That's I don't how- know. I think it was pretty good. <laughs> That's how it works. Guys, I'm sorry about this cough. I've, I've had it for the last couple of days, and I tried to get it gone by the time I got here, and it's still tickle, tickle. I don't know. If, maybe I got the COVID. Yeah. I, I know. I don't know. <clears throat> DB's tried figuring out how to get a voice like Gary's for years now. Okay, because DB's DB should always be in here for this one. Yeah, DB should be in here. He should really be in here. DB, uh, where's DB at? Come here, come in here, man. DB, come pull a chair up. Yes, please. <laughs> be a part I, of the. Program. I know you have questions. <laughs> I'm going to teach you. I know you have questions. All right, I'm going to. So we have the camera on you, I believe. Uh, okay, correct. Right. I, I don't know yes. how to do it. That's okay. Okay, That's so gonna I'm going to I'm going to teach you how to have a voice like this. It's very simple. Hit puberty. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? You know, it was funny because with this voice, I got this voice right at puberty. I mean, right in the middle of a sentence, too. Hey, Mom, we're getting ready to have a big party at school, and then all the we're getting to want to play football. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> wow. I am very envious. Scotch and cigarettes. <laughs> well, I did cigarettes for probably two decades. And I ain't playing. Scotch Not and cigarettes. Enough. Not scotch. I can. I could probably start hitting the scotch. <laughs> scotch and cigarettes. And and there's one word. And, and every day before I went on the radio, or even in the studio, I was always doing mouth exercises, stretching my mouth out. I mean, it looked goofy. And <laughs> and just like a singer, you you know, give yourself voice lessons. Right. There's one word that'll help you develop a voice like this, but you have to do it over and over and over. And you're going to look stupid. You're going to sound stupid. But who cares? You sound like this, and then life is going to be good. Apparently, you've never listened to my show. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was listening to it on the way in. I'm like, who in the world is that? <laughs> exactly. Just say the word him. Him. It's how you say it. Okay? Start at the top. Him. And go down. Him. Him. Just to do that. That's all you him. do. That's all you got to do. That's all I got to do. That's it. Well, just, it's oh. simple as and lots of scotch. And I'm gonna cigarettes. be sitting at work on my computer saying <laughs> people are gonna get annoyed at me saying him all day long. <laughs> I can d- see it now because because DB's him. convinced him. that that's the only thing that's been holding his radio career back is that he doesn't have a deep voice like you do, <laughs> dude. I've been I'm still out of work. <laughs> my last radio job was 2008, and nobody wants to hire him. Nothing to do with the voice. <laughs> Nowadays, you know, back in the day, uh, here's a cool story. I worked in uh, Richmond, Virginia. I was there for six and a half years. Uh, Liberty Broadcasting. The same company in D.C. where Wolfman Jack worked. Wolfman would come down occasionally from D.C. He'd come down to Richmond, and he would come into the studio with me. Hey, Gary, how you doing, baby? What's going on? Just, you know, typical... 
Wolfman Jack. Wolfman yep. Jack. And I was young, man. I was in late twenties, I guess. And he would look at me and go, how did you get that voice? I'm like, I don't know. I, I, again, you remember I used to tell you I talk like a country boy? They didn't put people like this on radio back then. No, you had and to break if, that habit. Yes, yeah. you sure did. And if you had a squeaky voice, they wasn't going to let you on any of it. You had to have some kind of a powerful radio voice to be on the radio. I wanted that. Okay. So the guy who gave me my first job in radio taught me how to lose the accent and how to project my voice to give it that boom and that sound. Right. right. And it's all about how you use your mouth. And you use your diaphragm, just like singing. Use your diaphragm, yep. blow it out. And if you do it constantly, whether you're on the air or not, whether you're on the phone, whether you're talking to your girlfriend, you're talking to your mom, over-enunciate every single word, every single one of them, and blow it out there. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, wild ones of all ages. It's all the projection, okay? You project it out, then you'll have a voice. Try it, DB. Just like Absolutely that. not. <laughs> Come not on. After he just did it. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That would sound ridiculous. <laughs> it would sound but, horrendous. But take it from down here. It took. A, it takes a lot of practice, man. Yeah. But you can have it. You just got to practice. He's going to be in the shower. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. He's going to be reading the newspaper. <laughs> this week, the COVID deaths are 47,000 in Maine. <laughs> Can I go back to my computer? His wife's yeah. gonna, wife gonna be like, "What? What are you doing? What? What? What is this? You're not allowed to hang out in the studio no more." <laughs> See what people are going to be missing if they don't come to Give Town. Mm, absolutely, because you, you guys know me. When I get oh, on it's stage, gonna be... it's going to be a riot. Because God knows, and He's the only one that knows what's going to come out of my mouth next. Well, it's not even like the show just ends when you come off stage. If you are there. Yeah. There is a show. There's going to be a <laughs> show. <Going on. laughs> yeah, I'm going to be doing magic tricks, and uh, I, I love magic. You know, I've taken, uh, somebody asked me the other day how we got to this point. I'm like, well, I did magic for years. I did radio for years, and television, and been in several movies, and worked for the WWE, and, you know, developed skills in each one of them. And then I did stand up for a little while. And then this hypnosis thing came along. I'm like, why don't I just take all of this stuff and put it together and do a show? And voila, here we are. Okay, back to this WWE stuff. I was the ring announcer. Yep, I did, uh, I don't know, six or seven shows. I toured with him for a little while. I actually stood toe-to-toe -to, -toe to the rock in his dressing room, told him that if I thought for one minute that he was messing around with my girlfriend at the time, who was part of the whole train. Remember that? She was part of that. And uh, I seen her walk out of his dressing room a couple of times, and, and I'm in their dressing room, and I'm told he's back against the wall. He's up here like this, and I'm just going off on him. And I walk out of his dressing room going, oh, my God, I'm going to die. He's going to kill me. He could crush my head. But I was, like, really mad. And later in life, I ended up working in Miami, Florida, at uh, three radio stations down there and he lived down there and he actually heard he heard me on the air called up the station me him and his wife went out and had had lunch and that was 2006 so he probably don't even remember me anymore but that's yeah that was what i did with the wrestling stuff you got the voice for it well it was fun <laughs> you know you get the crowd fired up and and i i try to say this without being egotistical there's nobody can upstage me now, I'd challenge them to try to upstage me. Mm. I know, I do challenge them. Freddie Mercury had a, I mean, he was a master of it. And I learned from him. And not just him, but a lot of the, because I was always into music, man. I mean, my, my, if my dad's listening right now, he's going to go, yep, I remember. And dad used, would get mad at me for listening to the radio because I'm not doing my work. You know, not doing the job he asked me to do. I was busy listening to the radio. And I had these, uh, I had 45s. Kind of what you got in here, 45s. And I had the the tweed-looking 45 record player. You know what I'm talking about? That it opens up, it has the speaker in the front. Right. Okay, yeah. and then I had a Mickey Mouse 45 record player. <laughs> okay. And, and I would sit there, and for Christmas one year. Literally, right? Literally. Okay. <laughs> and, and for Christmas one year, they had gotten me a boom box. 
Remember those? Yes. Mm-hmm. Big yep. speakers all the side, cassette tapes in the middle. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> so I'm listening to this radio station, WQMF. John Wells, the guy who did the commercial for Gibtown, he's the voice guy. He's the image guy. So I've known him or known of him since I was 10 years old, 11 years old, maybe. Okay. And I would listen to this radio station and I would write down everything the jocks would say. And I knew you could play one note and I could tell you exactly what song it is, what album it came from, what album, what, what the year was, the entire <laughs> band, who played what, and who band they were in before. You ever done, does Fester do that? Fester. Okay. Yeah. Well, he, when, when we're on road trips, he'll, okay. Who's this? You know, I mean, in other words, <laughs> April does the same yeah. thing. But see, I'll take it a step further. Okay, say, uh, uh, pick a song, any song, C- classic rock. Pick a song. Um, we are the champions, Queen. We are the champions, Queen. Six minutes and fourteen seconds. <laughs> well, no, actually, six twenty-three. I think. Mm. Well, the the just we are the champions is right. only two minutes and thirty seconds. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The hell yeah. See, <laughs> but I would do that, and and I'm off. You know, a couple of seconds, but that's still. It's still in yeah. there, you yeah, know. It's, it's pretty there. cool. Uh, well, it's part of the job, you know. Okay, I've got a break coming up in ten minutes. What am I going to throw right. in there? Yep. <clears throat> right, right. Well, when I was in radio, though, I was just a voice, and I enjoyed it because people look up to you. I mean, they literally they depend on you for the weather, time, temperature, especially in the mornings. This is old school radio. But nowadays, you don't have to have a big, powerful radio voice. You can have, you can be Fester or JD or DJ, whatever his name is. (laughs) DB. DB. (laughs) (laughs) You made an impression on me there. I'm horrible with names, man. But nowadays, it doesn't matter. People don't listen to for the voices anymore unless this is just my opinion. And you know this with, with corporate radio. Right. They've taken a lot of the fun. We're not corporate radio. <laughs> ah, <no. laughs> well, when corporate was, well, see, I was there when it started. Capstar came in and they bought up all these radio stations. And then they, one of the, the classic rock stations, they made me the music director. But I had it on air shift. I was the number one in the afternoon in Richmond, Virginia for six years. Number one. And uh, which I'm very proud of. Thank you very much. <laughs> but then after they started coming in, they go, okay, Gary, we're going to change things. We want you to say this at right. this time, but you can't say nothing else. I'm like, I'm a personality. This is a show. People listen to me because of, okay, what's going to come out of his mouth next? Well, and I think that's what our listeners appreciate. They tell us all the time, you know, it's radio like it used to be. You know, you never know what's going to come out, what's going to be There's talked about. nothing and scripted just... on here. Maybe a commercial. <laughs> that's, that's the only thing scripted and on here. And, you know, it? and that's funny you say that because even in my stand-up, even in my hypnosis shows, whatever, it is, none of that is scripted. Absolutely zero. When I get up on stage and I start doing jokes, it's usually something that happened that day that I made a joke of. I'll give you an example. We were in uh, Cape Coral, and there's a country bar. Country bar. Keep that in mind. Honky tonk. Right. Okay? I walk in. I never wear sleeves. I'm a biker. I'm the biker comedy hitman. I never wear sleeves. Okay? So when I get there, I'm the last guy in line. And, and the party that was with us, and April was before me, and then you got your ID, and he says, do you have a knife on you? I said, well, yeah, I, I got a knife. I said, Got two knives and a pair of nunchucks and four throwing stars and three pistols. And he goes, good Lord, man, what are you afraid of? I said, absolutely nothing. I ain't afraid of nothing. And he said, well, you're going to have to put that in the truck. I'm like, okay. So I go back to the truck, put my knife back in the truck, come back in. He checks my ID. Thank you for here. Here's my five bucks to get in. Order drinks. And then this other little wannabe bouncer comes over and says, dude, you can't be in here. I'm like, why? You're not wearing sleeves. It's a honky tonk, dude. You're not wearing sleeves. I'm saying you're really kicking me out of a country bar because I don't have sleeves on. Yep, that's our policy. Why didn't your doorman tell me before we even got here? Right. That's the first and foremost. Okay. Here's the joke. Well, of course, the all the other weapons that I well, that was part yeah. of the joke. Yeah. <laughs> the next day, before the show, 
we were staying this really quaint hotel, beautiful, right on the right on a canal. You saw the pictures of me yep, fishing. Facebook, man, yep. I loved it, man. It was beautiful. And we're sitting out there, and I'm having a cigarette, letting the dog run out in the yard, and a chopper's flying by, sheriff's department with gunmen on each side. You could hear sirens everywhere, all around us, and that this helicopter just circling right over top of us. And I looked at April, and I go, I hope they're not looking for the sleeveless guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously. Anyway, I just made that up for the show. Okay, I thought I got a good response out of it. I'm probably going to use that somewhere else. Nothing is scripted. Zero. Now, when you're doing the hypnosis stuff, yeah, there are certain things you have to do. But once I get things rolling, <laughs> who knows what's good. And that's what makes it fun. And Gibtown's going to be the same way. When I get on stage, and I'm so glad to be doing this because people are going to talk. Oh, yeah. People are going to talk. <laughs> They're already talking at, at, you know, from Angel City and some of the other things that I've done across the country. Well, we're doing a show in Arizona in February, which is a spinoff of the Ladies in Leather Bike Rally. One of the ladies that I'd hypnotized and made talk like a chicken <laughs> is going to have us back out there. So anyway, unscripted. They've taken away the fun of radio. And when you all ask me to be in the studio tonight, I, uh, I'll be there. <laughs> and wait a minute. I have to be here in the morning, too, don't I? Yeah, I want you to come in and uh, hypnotize. Jenny doesn't think that she can be hypnotized, so we're uh, <clears throat> this is morning. looking forward. Yeah, this morning. Is morning, like six, six to nine. In the morning. Yeah. You can you can come in at seven. You can come in at eight. Okay, just be here Don't before look at me. I'm not a morning person. <laughs> me either. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm in show business. My daytime ends at three in the morning. Anyway, I did a morning show for. Larry's going to appreciate you coming in one more time and plugging Gibtown. Okay. Oh, that, okay. Yeah. Well, then, 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 oh, that was that. a good yes, one. Yes, that was good. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> Yeah, but that worked out well for him, not me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, unless Larry has me there next year. Yeah, that'll be fun. <laughs> oh, oh, my we'll, gosh. We'll this definitely is, want you back after this. I year. sure hope so, because I'm going to do comedy. I can't not do... <laughs> I can't tell you some of the stuff that I did in Angel City. <laughs> yeah, I, Angel I, City. I, yeah. I can't tell you. Oh, wait a minute. Was it, no, Angel City was pretty laid back. I mean, we had fun. I cracked a lot of jokes. Right. Uh, it was Roscoe's. Oh, Ros oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Roscoe's is uh, a level above Angel City. Roscoe's there. is uh, that's my number one the, place. The best place. way I could describe this, what had happened, and being you know kid friendly here on the radio, was um, uh, a guy tried to do the helicopter and looked more like a, a drone and didn't even get off the ground. <laughs> I mean, it should have been like a nine volt battery hooked up to him. He probably got off the ground a lot better. But that's that's yeah, that's uh, Roscoe's. That's, that's being politically correct. <laughs> so it, 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 oh, I could go yeah. on and on and on. Do you remember the program before? <laughs> no, absolutely. Our, we will be all Saturday at Gibtown. Correct. And we're gonna have a drink because we have not had absolutely. A, we not had chance to do that. No, we haven't. And you guys got to come to back to Panama City too. Oh, hey. she's it's she's been planning on like that. I mean, the whole week from now on. The whole week from from this moment forward. Any time there's Bike Week in Panama City, I'm booked. He told me that last awesome. fall. Yeah, we're there. Come on, we're there. We'll yeah. Be locked, cocked, ready to rock, Doc. We got about another minute. You want to go ahead and do your thanks and uh, plug what's going on this Absolutely. weekend, Gary. We want to see everybody at Gibtown in Gibsonton, Florida. Uh, I don't know what time it starts tomorrow, but we're going to probably get there around noon or so. Yeah. I think doors open at, at 2. Yeah. There's over 30 bands. Lots of There's a flying motorcycle, a dancing monkey, sword swallower, axe throwing, all the peewee burger. Dart shooting April. Dart shooting April. <laughs> yeah, she's going to love that. And I hope they serve the Pee Wee Burger with, um, with tequila. So, as I always say, and I'll let you finish this up, smell the flowers now because you're only here for a short visit. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Love absolutely. you mean it. And rock on. But uh, absolutely, yes, uh, this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Gibtown, first one of the year, always a great uh, little bike event. I mean, just very... It's yeah, if you haven't been, folks, you need to experience it at least once. And you come and I mean? say hello, please. Do not be afraid to come and say hello. 
Absolutely. Okay. This is the Boss Hog Radio Network. 1170 AM WKFL Bushnell. 1330 AM WWAV Lakeland Plant City. 1360 AM WHNR Cypress Gardens Winter Haven. And 1390 AM and 107.5 FM WAVP and W298BU FM 